Hello my friends and welcome or welcome back to my channel. For today's reading I'm just going to do one reading because it is later in the day so I don't have time for a pick a card but I just want to thank you for all the support and the suggestions. I have decided to open a Patreon. Um, there are several people who you know have made hateful comments about it. I was prepared. I've seen people do it to other readers. I didn't want to go that route. But I also think somebody made a really good point this morning that if I go the Patreon route, then the people who join me there, you know, if they have to pay, then that will weed out the haters and, you know, the people who aren't so supportive. Um, my whole thing is I want to connect with I want to connect with you guys because I've been spending a lot of time in my comment section lately, but I can't get back to it once I comment once. Anyway, um, the other thing I wanted to do was people have been asking me about, you know, learning tarot, uh, doing a live where you can ask questions. And someone on TikTok today asked me if I could start talking about my favorite decks. So I thought that's all things that I can do on Patreon, um, and if you're a part of my soul tribe and you want to join me there, it truly, for me, is not about the money. Um, I told you guys that the other day. It's about wanting to connect on a deeper level with you, and it's hard to do that when there's thousands of comments in my comment section, you know? it's. I feel like my soul tribe kind of gets lost in there and I can't find you, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, anyway, I made a Patreon and I just want to, you know, add what I, I'm not, all of you are like, just add us right away. <laughs> so as soon as I have like the description box set up, <laughs> you guys will be the first to know. That's anyway, um, I did create one last night and I have it half set up, so and it's going to take me some time to learn. And for those of you who are terrified that I'm never coming back to YouTube, I will still be here every single day. Thank you very much. <laughs> I It's not about getting a different platform instead of this one. I truly just want a way to have a smaller community of you, the people in my comment section who know they're my soul tribe, you know that I'm talking to you. Anyway anyone is welcome as well. Anyway, rant over. <laughs> so let's get into it. I went to a store today <clears throat> and I thought, I know every tarot deck they have. I know they're not going to have, you know, what I want. They're just going to have the, the ones that are always there that I never get. And because I pick my, de my decks intuitively. Um, anyway, I went there and because I've seen the display so many times, I immediately saw this deck because I don't have it. But it's also, it just caught my eye. It's called Dirt Gems. And it just caught my eye and I had never seen it before. So I was like, you are coming home with me. <laughs> And, funny story, my soul family, <laughs> then I was at a checkout and somebody said, oh, I really like your nails. And I said, thanks, uh, I have to, I said, I'm a talking pair of hands on the internet. And she said, really, what do you do? And I said, I read tarot. She's like, do you actually read tarot? She's like, I've, she's like, no wonder you look familiar. She's like, I think I've seen you. And she's like, do you do readings? And I said, well, not right now, but I have, you know, a community on, on uh, YouTube. Anyway, she pulled out her phone and she's like, what's your name? And <laughs> she start, she subscribed to me and it was really cute. Anyway. Pointless shares. <laughs> Somebody just dropped a utensil downstairs. So anyway. I don't know much about this deck, so I thought we could just get to know it together, my friends, and we'll see what we need to hear. Oh, that's beautiful. <gasps> that's beautiful.
we'll do one more. Hawthorn butterfly, beautiful. Look, oh my gosh, I just heard something that, oops, I just spit. <laughs> I tried to record this one a few times. I started rambling in the beginning and my ego made me restart. But anyway, um, I've been experiencing a lot of spiritual growth lately and upgrades and like I'm having dreams, like really clear dreams. I'm seeing crazy synchronicities, crazy things are happening to me. And I was thinking about that today. And in the original video that I was recording, I said, maybe you're going through changes too. Maybe you're experiencing more synchronicities. Maybe you're learning to trust your inner self more. And I just, guys, when I saw this, I just thought it was so beautiful. Um, again, I've never even looked at this card, but I just saw, you know, I know this sounds crazy, but I'm seeing me and you guys, and it's just beautiful. I love it. I love it. Oh, and you know, there's a hater watching down on us. <laughs> anyway, I just had to say that. Um, thank you for listening. <laughs> I just, that's very symbolic to me. It makes me tear up a little. <sighs> These cards are so nice. <laughs> I would love to sh tell you, like, ramble on about my favorite decks to the people who want to hear it, you know? California Poppy 6. Oh, dear. What is this about? California Poppy. Maybe your name's Poppy. Maybe the movie Trolls is relevant. Okay, let's see. 6, Lover's Energy. Gemini Energy. As far as six goes, <laughs> the joy spark. Hmm. Well, isn't this interesting? Let's see my friends. <laughs> it is on page um, 28 and 28 and 29, which, you know, is 10 and 11. Wheel of Fortune energy. Anyway, let's see what's happening here. Wheel of Fortune energy followed by justice, perhaps in a lover's connection. California Poppy is here to play. They invite you out into the sun, into the bold warmth of summer, of fields, of colors, of sweat. California Poppy is a child of the sun. It is warming, emboldening. It is a warm, emboldening bleh, force of light. <laughs> oh dear. California Poppy is a medicine of youth, newness, renewal! <laughs> An unfettered willingness to be playful with life. I love it. They're a powerful and a meaningful ally to children and babies, but also to adults. Oh my gosh, my light workers, my brave people who have been messaging me saying, I did it. I made a channel. There's nothing on it and nobody knows about it, but it's there. <laughs> Listen to this. If you are starting something new, California Poppy can help you enter a childlike state of innocence, trust, and openness. And that goes for a rebirth or a renewal as well, my friends. If you're thinking of, if you're, if you're about to go through a renewal or rebirth with someone in a lover's connection, for example, because we do have six here, um, this message is important to you. Because it can help you enter a childlike state of innocence, trust, and openness. Um, they can guide you through any feelings of overwhelm. Oh, stop. Like the fear of putting yourself out there. Or aid you in working through any limiting beliefs that may sabotage your endeavor. Often, if there are early life experiences that caused us to retreat or feel unsafe, distrustful or scared those experiences pervade much of our future endeavors in confusing ways oh my gosh yesterday I posted a video about trauma and about how it was one that I should know their page but I don't um after school something maybe anyway it's on the community page um and it was all about how the, how we experienced rejection from our parents or, you know, 
scolding for doing something that it affected our true sense of self. And then we learned how to hide that self from other people and dull it with, you know, distractions. Um, if you haven't watched it, you should go watch it. But this is what this is talking about. Light, early life experiences that caused us to retreat or feel unsafe, distrust, distrustful, or scared. Anyway. Those experiences pervade much of our future endeavors in confusing ways. If there was trauma during your own birth, during your parents' pregnancy, or in your family, this may impact you later in life. I, this is too strange. I have to tell you guys something in a minute. This is very strange. Explore your history with California Poppy as your guide. Trauma or conflict around coming into this world or bringing in others can leave a lingering sense of unease within the individual. If you are struggling with ever-shifting desires, always seeking something better, or hooked on highs and lows, addictive patterns, what was I just saying about that thing? Anger and restlessness, find California Poppy and invite them in. They will sit with you when the ability to just be with yourself in discomfort or pain feels unbearable. They will allow you to move through these difficult, no, nope. they will allow you to move through these challenging feelings and find a warm ray of sunlight penetrating your heart. Um, this is so interesting because it really does tie into that thing that I posted yesterday about how in childhood, we learn how to dim our light and play small and not want need for anything based on, you know, the way our parents raised us. And that it's so interesting. You should go watch it if you haven't. And the other thing that's crazy about this card is that today at lunch, and I said this in the first video that I made, I should have just kept it. I took my, I like to take my kids out for one-on-one -on -one time because I have four kids and I took my daughter out today and at lunch, I don't know how it came up, but she started talking to me about, um, trauma and she started talking to me Well, she brought up grandparents and my kids don't have grandparents that are healthy to be in their lives. And I was explaining to her that I can see my, I can see the trauma from my childhood in her reactions to me. It's so strange. And it does. Trauma passes through, like, passes through down, through generation, through generation, through generation. Um, I, I've seen it in my own kids. You know, I was scared when I was younger. I got yelled at, you know, there were other things. Um, I wasn't allowed to have feelings. I wasn't allowed to have needs. Um, for example, my daughter's room got out of control, messy, and she would not let me in it. I think I mentioned this in a reading. And she convinced me, or sorry, I eventually convinced her to let, she was so scared, but I convinced her to let me help her. Scared of me? Like, <laughs> anyway, she was terrified. And the, when I went in, she was like, thought she was going to get punished. She looked, she kept apologizing. She was scared. And I knew I was seeing my trauma from my childhood right in front of my eyes and her. And she had never experienced any of that. Um... I just can't, it's crazy that card came out. Um, so that's what I mean about how five of swords behavior, when people self-sabotage relationships, they're acting in a way, you know, oh, this is getting deep. They're acting from a place from their parents' trauma, possibly their grandparents' trauma, their own trauma. Um, like I said, Usually in families like that, there's one child, a star seed, who's meant to realize what's going on and evolve from those karmic cycles. And that's what I'm going through. Um, so you could be someone that's going through that. Anyway, it's so strange that that card came out because that's exactly what I was explaining 
to my daughter at lunch about trauma and how hopefully that trauma won't, you know, pass through another generation now that we've stopped it. But anyway, oh my goodness. <sighs> <laughs> well thanks for listening friends let's go what do you need to hear did I already shuffle that that was just bottom of the deck I think what do you need to hear oh my gosh that was so did you feel that bang I can't wait to teach you guys about tarot that came out with a bang 42 and I'm going to take it lions could be symbolic um, this was originally on the bottom of the deck when I started but my intuition told me to cut it in half and not look at it um, world world energy anyway that came out very heavy so it'll be interesting to see what this is 46 42 6 and you know what <sighs> I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it already. High priestess energy. Trusting your intuition. Trusting your spiritual path. For emperor energy. Having the courage to put yourself out there. Thank you. Somebody, somebody made a comment about how long my readings are. Yesterday. And I saw it. And I was like, I will. I struggle. Every time I see a bad comment, I immediately want to block them. <laughs> That's that unhealed triggered energy. Um, anyway, so I left it and I immediately saw someone respond. So thank you, friend. Thank you for being in my corner. <laughs> what am I doing? 42. The middle finger of protection. <laughs> what? It's the middle finger of protection. That's interesting. And it's on page... 104, which equals 5. Anyway, let's see what spirit wants you to hear, my friend. Look at that lion. Beautiful. Oh, Lobelia. Is that how you say it? Lobelia is a loving and firm advocate. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. We all need this card. Lobelia is a loving and firm advocate for giving fewer fucks, caring much less about approval, and drawing clear and uncompromising boundaries. Lobelia will bring you back. If you find yourself feeling unraveled or if you are prone to panic or severe anxiety, Lobelia will not shy away from your high intensity state. A no-nonsense plant, Lobelia has a long ceremonial history and has been used for protection to allow us to slide into more expansive states. Panic and anxiety are contra contractive? contractive. Within these states, we vibrate too quickly and unevenly. Lobelia allows our shoulders to drop and our esophagus to open. It says, you are okay, I will protect you. Lobelia allows a smoothing out and slowing down, bringing our rocking down to ripples rather than crashing waves. Lobelia, Lobelia has long been thought of as a love, as an anti-love tonic. Love tonics or love potions are, at their core, a symbol of someone feeling ready for love. Consider how you are willing to receive love. What boundaries? Oh my goodness. Incoming lover. <laughs> Consider how you are willing to receive love. What boundaries and limits are needed? and invite this clear desire in. If you are not willing to get to the truth of it, Lobelia will not be able to help you in the ways you desire. Lobelia is known as an emetic and a purgative, a medicine that produces vomit or rids us of unwanted or unneeded things. This could be harmful food. Stop, I like my chocolate <laughs> and cookies. Poison or toxins. <laughs> But it could also be unhealthy love or attention that is not serving you. Lobelia sees the things you may not want to look at, your hidden emotional currents and secret motivations. Lobelia says, look with strength. Once you see it, you can handle it. The monsters as an, oh my gosh, the monsters are not as scary as we think they are. I love that. 
ego monster, you can go to. Hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh, how beautiful. So this, this is, I can't help it. This is giving me, this lion reminds me of what you embody when you're in your queen of swords energy and you like defend your, like you stand up for yourself and you like, this is my authentic truth. And if you don't like it, here's that boundary. Um, I love it. For those of you thinking about putting yourself out there, this is a huge confirmation. Sun, sun. Did you see the sun just increased when I said that? Sun, shine your little light butterfly. <laughs> Um, and for others of you with the first card, six, that talked about trauma, um, this card, six, talking about someone coming towards you. Um, so very interesting. Like I said, lions could be symbolic. And I've been talking about how we all need to embody that inner lion and go after what we want. I have to tell you guys, there's another six on the bottom. There's 51. So that's 666, six, six. and before I stopped recording, because my ego monster is evil, <laughs> not really, but a little, um, I was telling you that I was, I am experiencing like very crazy number synchronicities all the time, and now we have 666 six, six here. Today I saw, I kept seeing 3333, three, 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 like over and over and over again. How weird is that? And I, I've been seeing one, 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 one over and over and over again, or I'll pause music or a tarot reading at one, one, like you guys know what I'm talking about. You're my type of crazy pants. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. What else do you need to know here? Poison Ivy and Poison Oak 64. Another six, you guys. Sixty-four, lots of fours, lots of sixes. You know what I'm gonna say? That's symbolic of <clears throat> emperor energy and lovers energy. Oh my gosh! I keep looking at the page number instead of the card. Sixty-four, one fifty. Six. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's on page 150. <laughs> Six. The gatekeepers. Poison ivy and po poison oak are plants that are often demonized by humans because they cause a striking, uncomfortable, and sometimes painful reaction in our bodies. But these messages from the plant world are meaningful and important, even if we do not like the message to which we must pay attention. These poison plants contain a chemical called, oh dear gosh, arushiol, 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 <laughs> which for many people causes a painful and itchy rash. This is the plant's defense system, but it is also part of the plant's overall communication system. I can't wait to read the next two paragraphs. Poison ivy and poison oak are guardian plants. They are rehabilitators, gatekeepers, renewers. Another card talking about a renewal. You will find poison ivy or po poison oak in great quantity in places in need of protection. These areas have, for one reason or another, been too exposed, damaged, impacted, or overrun. Poison oak and poison ivy step in to say enough. They require you to pause, look more closely, consider your surroundings, and move with care and caution. If you find yourself face to face with the message from one of these plants, listen more deeply to what you are resistant to hear and find your work there. Hmm, interesting. The medicine of poison oak and poison ivy is a loving one. Even if you end up with an uncomfortable or temporary rash, I just heard temporary separation. This is an ally that takes the act of care and protection very seriously, often for their fellow plants and ecosystems that need to take a breath and have more space. That is magical. That's magical that it grows to protect areas that need protection naturally. That's amazing. 
Um, you too can provide this type of fierce love and care for your surroundings. You too can wear the cloak of boundaries, creating space for what needs to grow. Temporary, didn't I say it? I heard temporary separation. Creating a space for what needs to grow, breathe, and recover within you. Learning to make this space from your poison guardians. And do you know what I was seeing when I was, like, I do counterpart readings. I was actually seeing two people. We have the Wheel of Fortune. And when you think about it, the Wheel of Fortune spins, right? And what I was seeing was I was seeing two people and the Wheel of Fortune and these, like, on one side, Poison Ivy, and on the other side, Poison Oak creating like hanged man energy between two people, stopping that wheel of fortune so that there can be healing. There's a lot about boundaries in this reading. So perhaps stronger boundaries were needed. Perhaps you lacked boundaries. Um, you know, I didn't know what a boundary was until a few years ago and I still struggle. I was taught boundaries or, you know, mean you're being selfish. Um, there was another one that also talked about boundaries, this one right here. So if someone is returning to you, whether that be a counterpart, a past love, a family member, um, remember your boundaries. Remember that you were separated with that person for a reason so that you could grow and evolve, so that you could both grow and evolve. Um, anyway, it's very, I find it interesting that we have 64, which is Wheel of Fortune energy, Lover's energy and emperor energy with the six and the four. And this one's talking about boundaries and about how you needed time to heal. And that's what our logical mind doesn't understand. That's why people in the comment section who are like, they don't understand how separation can be so healing. Um, anyway, let's get another card. We have, <laughs> we have Rosemary, 13, death and rebirth. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> I need to see if these are straight. I mean, they're kind of straight. <laughs> Isn't that so interesting? You know what else I was going to tell you? That when I was on my way home, my daughter and I blasted the music and we were like dancing in the car and just enjoying raising our vibrations. So keep that in mind too. Um, I'm not lying to you guys. I dance in my bathroom. I'll put on a groovy song. A groovy? Oh dear. <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that. <laughs> I'll put on a groovy song. Um, interesting. I always used to joke that I was like a hippie in a past life. And I think that that's not a joke anymore. <laughs> I just said groovy. I just heard groovy, baby. <laughs> the holder of belonging. It's on page 42, which is another six. What is happening? And that equals four. I'm also seeing empress energy and magician energy. So you making things happen now that you're in your empress energy. Anyway, beautiful. Rosemary is a deep, unconditional, I will cross space and time for you kind of love. What? <gasps> okay. Rosemary has a long history of being planted in front of homes to act as a guardian and a protector for the household and to balance the family's presence within. If you are feeling not completely present in your life or body or are struggling to keep up, bring Rosemary into your family. Is it aromatic or aromic? Because it's aroma. So is it aro aromic? Or is it, how I like to say it, aromatic? <laughs> Rosemary is awakening, oh, stimulating, and grounding and can bring these qualities into your days with strength. Often feelings of not being fully incarnated or in our bo body and soul linger from a time early in our lives when we may have needed to split from our full selves and live only in part of ourselves. What did I say <laughs> about that video and about how we slowly lost our sense of self? Anyway, oh my gosh. Autistic people 
masking. Um, and only live as parts of ourself. Ugh. There are many different reasons children feel the need to protect themselves. Sometimes simply a sense of instability or the unknown. Other times from a direct threat and assault. No matter the cause of the fracturing of self, it can leave parts of us out of the conversation with one another. Rosemary helps build the walls of our personal fortresses, bringing our sense of home and belongings into the very core of our being. The essence of Rosemary is the deep satisfaction of creating something yourself. Empress energy and magician energy. Something that is lasting and meaningful. The sense of home that Rosemary can bring is the harbinger, harbinger of all, all of us that we can build whatever we need to house our desires, our longings, our sense of place. Didn't I start my reading about talking about building a place on Patreon? <laughs> Rosemary's at the door waiting to sit down at the table with you and celebrate. Oh my gosh. Uh, you guys, there's a lot of lover's energy in this reading and celebration and rebirth and renewal and boundaries and feeling protected because you've worked on your childhood trauma. Um, this is, this is powerful, my friends, <laughs> powerful. Okay, so let's get into tarot. If you guys are going to join me on Patreon... You need to get a deck. You need to get, you need to choose one deck that, that you'll learn from while I walk you guys through it. Um, for me, it was the Light Sears Tarot and I kept learning with the Light Sears Tarot. I kept learning, learning, learning. And then when I felt confident with that one and I started using other decks, I would actually, I could, I have like, I visualized the Light Sears deck in my head for a while and that helped me through learning how to read other tarot cards. Um, again, these are the things I want to talk to you about over there. Like, you know, if you're going to pick out tarot decks, you hear me talk about it. I'm really drawn to decks that have um, art the entire way through and that give intuitive messages with them. And there's lots of, you know, there's lots of more inexpensive decks. There's lots of more inexpensive decks like this one where it's like just very generic nine of wands, ten of wands, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, so I like to go for the ones with art on each suit and cup, if that makes sense. And yeah, like I said, I like um, anything with imagery in it because it helps. It really does help connect everything together. But like I said, that's what I want to talk about over there because I lose, you know, not lose, but there's people that don't want to hear that, that just want, you know, quick messages of comfort from tarot, um, which I understand. Ace of Swords, oh my gosh, a breakthrough moment. Breakthrough, as I say that the sun started shining harder. Um, you know, Ace of, that shows new chapter, you know, new beginnings, you knowing, you know, stepping into your power and seeing, putting yourself out there, starting your business, for example, starting your soul path, I'm hearing. It's also very symbolic of communication. So someone communicating with you. We have the Ace of Wands. Okay. <laughs> Ace of Wands, Ace of Swords, passionate, passionate. Well, what are you? The two of coins. Perhaps I did. I did do a reading yesterday. Perhaps you are balancing two jobs, um, and you know you're trying to figure out what to put more of your energy into. But anyway, let's get into it. We have the moon, divine feminine energy, listening to your intuition. You could have fear of the unknown. Um, like I told you guys the other day. People will try and push you off your path. Lower vibrational people will judge you. Um, 
Queen of Coins, you've got this. Queen of Pentacles, you're looking very nice here. Queen of, look, you can have anything you want. Look how that hand is out. You can have anything you can manifest. I'm a true believer in that. You can manifest anything you want if you work hard enough. And if things aren't coming into manifestation, there's something that you're not seeing. Queen of Pentacles. You know, whatever this is, it's going to be stable and nurturing, whether it's this person returning or it's you, you know, growing into a very independent person who, you know, perhaps financially you start your own business. I'm seeing King of Pentacles. Ten of Cups. Oh, my gosh. Emotional fulfillment. Here we go. Death and Rebirth. I truly feel once, like for those of you who are focusing on your soul path, that's when those blockages come away in terms of love. I really do. King of coins, what did I just say? Oh my gosh. I just said I'm seeing the king of pentacles. There's your match. Oh my gosh, I just heard from Ever After again. She's your match, Henry. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Confirmation for those of you that are starting your own business. King of Pentacles energy. You've got this. You've got that lion within you and everybody else can. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. That is called the middle finger. <laughs> if anybody saw me do that, I tried not to do it fully. But like that card said, everybody else can. <laughs> we have the ten of coins. I don't know if you guys understand the importance here. We had the Queen of Pentacles, the Ten of Cups, the King of Pentacles. Oh my gosh, I just heard something crazy. I feel like you were Queen of Pentacles, stable, ready to nurture something. Ten of Cups, it was emotional fulfilling, emotionally fulfilling, this relationship with this person. But because there wasn't enough stability there, enough energy put in, enough commitment, whatever it was, it kind of stopped at the Ten of Cups. Um, enter the King of Pentacles, and now we've got the Ten of Coins. So I feel like someone's gone through a level up. Oh my gosh, your person is leveling up. King of Pentacles. <laughs> As you level up, they level up. Five of Wands, blockages. Blockages there for a reason. <laughs> All right. Let's get into it. We have the devil. What are you afraid of? Is there anything toxic you're still holding on to? People, um, this is amazing. Um, clearing away people and things and vices that no longer serve you and truly stepping onto your soul path. Um, you could be dealing with someone who had a lot of shadows, someone that you had a codependent connection with. And when I say codependent, I described it in a couple of my videos a couple of weeks ago, I think. Um, but you know, we all immediately, our ego says, I'm not codependent. <laughs> Um, but I can tell you in my experience, I went through codependency and it looks like always wanting somebody's approval, always wanting them to validate that they love you, always wanting them to work harder to show you that they love you. Um, you know, codependency can show up like getting upset because someone takes too long to text you back. Um... Those are codependent energies. Um, anyway, we also have the maestro. So I have to get this because this is um, one of the bonus. Hang on, I have to stand up and get the book. That's one of the bonus cards in this deck. Day. 
I'm also called to the rainbows, the two rainbows on this card, especially because, you know, we've got that six lovers energy, um, two people going through transformations and awakenings. We see those. I see two third eyes just because those are different. Um, anyway. Do you know what I just heard? It's like your higher selves can see each other in the 5D, but in the 3D, maybe not. Okay. I was looking for that. Bonus card, please. Where are you? The Maestro. Okay. So we've got the Maestro and we've got the Devil. I can't kick this energy that I've got people who are afraid to be in the spotlight and your ego and your fear and the way people have doubted you in the past or haven't believed in you has caused you. Look at the sun has caused you to fear putting yourself out there. Um, anyway. The maestro is a powerful representation of the intricate, int oh my gosh, intricate, oh my gosh, my brain. Intricate, yeah, there we go. Dance between control and collaboration. It emphasizes the beauty of unity, unity, <laughs> and the skill required to create harmony out of potential chaos. This card is a testament to the Baroque, Baroque spirit of combining multiple parts into a grand expressive role. It reflects the ne necessity of a guiding vision and the influence of a single knowledgeable leader to achieve coll collective greatness. The maestro thus stands as a symbol of the artistry of leadership and the impact an, of individual expertise in achieving a common goal. Mastery, leadership, artistic expression, unity. So, I love it for you, my friend. I love it. But, interesting. Um, I have to go back to this. But I do feel like your fear holds you back. So those are for those of you who are thinking about going towards something. For others of you, this maestro is giving me... We have the Eight of Cups here. So I feel like perhaps you had to walk away from someone. Oh yeah, there we go. I feel like you had to walk away from someone who was a runner. I'm seeing it here. And not only that... The maestro, I was called to the re reversal, which says it may signal a time when disharmony arises, possibly from too much control or unclear leadership. And this eight of cups, you know, for some of you, this could be you walking away from a job because, you know, it's unhealthy and, you know, the people who are above you don't treat you fairly and you're, you know, ready to step out on your own. Um, for others of you, you could have been dealing with someone, you could have been dealing with a reversal of this card. Whoever this is coming in for renewal or rebirth, the maestro gives me the energy that it was a connection that there was too much control in and... That goes for, you know, possibly your side as well, because perhaps you tried to control the situation. Um, and that's when this poison ivy and poison oak come in to kind of keep the both of you safe so that you can work through your shadows alone. Um, but anyway, let's get into it. So what do we want to know? I want to know about this rebirth. <laughs> well, let's just look. We'll go past, present, future first. Past with this rebirth energy. Let's go past energy. Past energy. We have the sun and temperance. Oh, my goodness. So I have to say, 
these are the two horses in the chariot. And that always reminds me of yin and yang, divine masculine and divine feminine energy. You see these two horses as horses? Oh my gosh. You see these two horses frolicking in the flower field. You know, they're frolicking, they're running free. There's so much energy. There's that soul spark. We're so happy. Everything's amazing. Unexplainable connection. A bond you can't explain. That is so much fire, you know, divine masculine energy. But it's a lot of fire. It's a lot of joy. And what I'm seeing is like anything, too much of one thing of anything can become a bad thing. And something became imbalanced here. Enter the poison ivy and the poison oak. I'm hearing childhood wounding. I'm hearing need for boundaries. Um, you and this person learning how to love and receive. Um, temperance shows the energy needing to balance, the need to be patient. So right away, that's what I'm hearing um, with that sun card. Where do I want to put this? I actually want to put it there. Let's go current energy. We have the hermit, isolation, reflection. Nine, you both independent energy focusing on your soul paths, reflecting on where your life is supposed to be going. Um, you could be someone who's thinking about, you know, how to accomplish more. Maybe you're, the things you've been thinking about doing, you're starting to put into action. Um, we do have the Page of Cups, so there's still this intuitive pull between you and this person. Um, the Page of Cups is a very intuitive energy. There could be, you know, an energy of someone needing to apologize to with the Page of Cups, Queen of Coins. So you could have been dealing with someone who was, oh my gosh, that is interesting. You could have been dealing with someone who was emotionally immature, um, who maybe, you know, lacked wanting to commit. Um, I think it's very interesting that I just said an apology. And the Queen of Coins, remember, I said, that Queen of Coins, you know, knows what's due. Like, she knows what's owed to her. <laughs> so I found it interesting when I held them like that. It's like, oh, the apology into her hand. I see it. Like, yes, please. <laughs> anyway, um, so maybe right now what I'm seeing is whoever you're in isolation with is working on, you know, their own vulnerabilities and you're focusing on your own stability. You could like blankets. I just, I love blankets. <laughs> Let's go um, near future energy with this connection. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> Maybe you guys were like in a situation ship because I didn't want to label it. Very interesting. Six of swords, trying to move forward. So you're you know, not dwelling, you're trying to move forward, you're trying to release things that no longer serve you. Six of Swords does show an energy of wanting to reconnect. Um, so I'm seeing two people in hermit mode, both trying to move on. Um, you both have an intuitive pull towards each other. Um, but this is the energy of wanting to reconnect. And I also wanted to mention something to you that I actually have never gotten this message about this card, although I did hear it once in a reading, um, be probably before I learned how to read tarot, but I've never felt it like I do in this one. And in the Six of Swords, sometimes you can see a mother and a child, and it can represent someone who is releasing trauma from the past in order to help their child. It can also represent, you know, someone leaving with their child or coming back with their child, take it as it resonates. Um, but, you know, I was just talking about the trauma and breaking cycles, you know, and we do see this feminine going off into the distance, into calmer waters with a child. Um, so... There is something to be said here. Perhaps you're both trying to release. I know it's not the Six of Cups, but perhaps you're both trying to leave those trauma wounds, Three of Swords, 
from your childhood behind um, so that you can reconnect is what I'm hearing. And yeah, we had Page of Cups on the bottom again, even though I shuffled twice. So confirmation of that card right there and the Queen of Coins. So I want to look at your energy. Show me your energy. Your energy. Judgment and Wheel of Fortune. Holy poop. The chariot. What the f <laughs> The chariot and the fool. You're taking a leap of faith towards something that's not your person. Um, and you could feel like they're going to take a leap of faith towards you, or maybe you don't. I don't know. But anyway, to me, you're focused on, you know, moving forward. I did mention the chariot, although the two horses aren't on this one, which is sad. Um, maybe... <laughs> Maybe you're waiting <laughs> for that horse, like not waiting. I don't mean waiting, but you know, maybe you intuitively know this black horse is coming towards you. Um, anyway, current energy, your energy, we have judgment and the wheel of fortune. You have, you have gone through some type of awakening. Remember, we go through multiple awakenings. We go through many, we level up, um, and this is beautiful energy. Wheel of Fortune, I am seeing you changing your destiny somehow by going within and focusing on what your soul is telling you. Judgment, it does show to me that you do want... I feel like you want a conversation with this person, perhaps. You want this person to take accountability. Um, but very beautiful energy. You're in an energy of flow and reflection, and I love it. Um, very beautiful. Very, like, you could be thinking about things a lot, um, pondering things, you know, having realizations. It's beautiful. Very beautiful. And, you know, I'm... I gotta say it, it looks like you're just like, well, I'm just gonna get on with my life while that person frolics in the sun and needs to learn their lessons or something. I don't know why I'm hearing that. I also mentioned Ever After, and that's giving me Cinderella vibes. Let's see your person's energy. Show me your person's energy. Sun is a healing energy, okay? If you, like, the energy of the sun, it's so healing. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Your person's energy. <laughs> Your person is also going through an ending. You know, we have death here for a reason. Um, and I think... That your person is having, you know, I feel like they're going through something very similar to you, except theirs, theirs looks more like a dark night of the soul. It's very dark here. Um, perhaps your person feels like this is over. I also have to mention that this person is sitting there watching that hourglass as if to say your person is held back because of divine timing, wheel of fortune. Because there's something they have to realize here. Eight of Swords can talk about trauma that needs to be healed. Um, trauma that can be healed. So this person is, you know, overthinking about you right now. And they're overthinking about when to come in. And, you know, it looks like that Temperance card. It looks like this Poison Oak, Poison Ivy, whichever one is protecting them, is saying it's not time yet. I also find it very symbolic that we have a skull with a crown and a rose um, because that looks as if that's a queen to me. But anyway, take it as it resonates. Um, so your person is going through transformative energy, um, whether you know or not. And I am seeing dark night of the soul for some of them, especially if let's say you have had a dark night of the soul. And now you're going through a spiritual awakening or you're ascending in a different way. This person could now be going through their dark night of the soul, picking up on that energy. And we have two of cups in the bowl. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my gosh, look, look. Your person's energy wanting to come wanting to take a leap of faith towards you with this energy. This person thinks about you a lot. Ace of coins, stable offer. Stable offer. A found of what do you call it? Stability. <laughs> An offer of stability. <laughs> Knight of Coins wanting to rush, Knight of Swords wanting to rush in towards you, wanting to pursue this. Um, this person realizes you're not chasing them anymore and it's up to them to take action. Emperor, and we have justice. So we see someone ref in deep reflection here about this connection. I love it. I love it. Yay. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Maybe your person watched my reading yesterday. Um, let's see how you're feeling about this person. How do you feel about this person? We have the six of coins. I'm also going to peek at these. We have strength and that's, oh, excuse you. You okay? Yeah, right. All right. Wally. <laughs> um, so we do have strength here. So you do feel almost an unbreakable bond with this person that you can't explain. Even when they're that scary lion, um, you still love this, you know, the soul within them, I'm hearing. And that could go both ways. You know, you and this person could have triggered each other. We do have six of coins here showing that you want balance. You want reciprocal, healthy love. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, perhaps in the past, we did see that two of pentacles. Perhaps this person failed to give you that. You know, perhaps they needed some needed to heal something there. This person could have, you know, could have acted from a place of ego. We do have the world card. So you do feel at a distance from this person. Um, this is also symbolic of, you know, You've been through something with this person. Perhaps there were patterns there that you were repeating that you had to break. And we have the nine of cups on the bottom. Oh my goodness. So you know, like you feel this person is your wish fulfillment. You know, this is unconditional love, especially with the strength card coming out with it. The nine of cups is an energy where you love someone even though, you know, sometimes they upset you. Sometimes they do things you don't like. Um, you still have this unconditional intuitive love for them. And that's how you're feeling about them. Three of cups, you probably want to interact with them again. Let's see how they're feeling about you. So we have the high priestess that came out yesterday too in thoughts. So they're not really sure what's going on with you and they feel this intuitive connection to you that they probably can't describe. Yeah, we have the, look at this. We have the King of Swords, the Hanged Man, and the Ten of Wands. And the Ten of Wands is, in this sense, we see someone, like I said, someone wanting to communicate with you, but waiting for divine timing. Waiting until they're allowed to, I heard. <laughs> until their spirit guide says it's okay. <laughs> that they're healed enough to play with you. <laughs> Have you learned your lessons? <laughs> um, anyway, King of Swords and the Hanged Man shows that this person is reflecting about this. This person, this is clarity. Oh my goodness, this is clarity. Um, and this is someone who wants to communicate that clarity with you. The Ten of Wands looks like this person is almost done pushing this away. Because once they hit that Ten of Wands, that's, you know, that's, it's like the straw that breaks the camel's back. So it's the weight of the world on their shoulders and them finally letting go those of those burdens and communicating with you. So this is someone who thinks about communicating what they're going to say a lot is what I'm hearing. I'm actually going to stick two of these back in the deck, I think. Yeah, and High Priestess on the bottom. There's an energy of uh, confusion 
about you with your person just because they're not really sure how you're feeling about them is what I'm seeing. You're mysterious. Okay. Um, let's see your intentions. What are your intentions? Oh, this is so many cards. I'm going to take... I'm going to take these ones. I just took the first three. Um, so we have nine of coins. So right now your intention is to keep working on yourself. Keep stabilizing your own foundation. I do see that if this person were to come in and communicate with you, you know, you would hear them out with the four of wands. You would hear them out if their offer was good, um, is what I'm hearing. Four of Cups shows an energy of how can I put this in for intentions? I'm almost seeing like there's this deep down fear you think they're never going to reach out is what I'm seeing. That perhaps you never think they're going to take action towards you um, deep down. Like you're trying to be stable and confident but deep down, sometimes the devil, the devil card says, oh, what if they never reach out? I do feel like this person and you have gone through changes and that, you know, you're at a place where you know this person needs to come and change if it's going to work, um, is what I'm seeing. All right, let's see their intentions towards you. Oh, interesting. <laughs> that's magic. You guys, that's magic. <laughs> uh, Ten of Wands in reverse. <laughs> that is so interesting, which is when they put down the burdens of staying away from you and they come in. Ten of Wands in reverse is when you put down, you know, the fear. You put down the burdens, you know, this person's been miserable without you for long enough. And we see them wanting to share what they've been through with you, wanting to talk to you about it. Um, I'm actually going to specifically ask. Um, there's a lot here. This is someone, I'm actually just going to use the bottom of the deck. I was going to ask what this Ten of Wands is about. And this Ten of Wands shows this person wanting to share with you, wanting to talk to you about some of these burdens. And I'm seeing, remember I said the Three of Swords and the childhood trauma? Um, we do have Three of Swords. This person is tired of being in separation with you with that energy. Ten of Wands in reverse and the Three of Swords. This is someone who can't take the separation anymore. And this is also someone who wants to, you know, share with you, you know, possibly how they've realized the ways they hurt you. Perhaps they tell you, here's the way you hurt me. Um, we do see the Four of Swords. So this person wanting to come out of a break, like wanting to come out of isolation, Knight of Cups wanting to rekindle things with you is what I'm seeing. All right, let's see what action this person will take towards you. Oh my gosh, that was magic. <gasps> That's magical. These flipped out, hit my arm, landed in reverse. And, oh my gosh, this is, this is freaking magical. That is crazy how that happened. How does that work? Do you ever get, do you guys ever think about that? Like, is there a, like, I'm serious right now. Do you guys ever think about how that works? Like, that seemed so divinely timed. Like, there was someone else beside me. Like, sometimes it feels like there's someone else, like, doing things with the cards. Like, it's just, how do you explain it? Five of Wands in reverse. They want resolution. 
Four of coins in reverse, wanting to stop holding back. It's very clear here that someone who there's no more blockages and they come in, you know, their, their higher self says, okay, time's up. You can go now. You can message them. And four of coins in reverse. They don't want to hold back anymore. The magician wanting to make something happen here, wanting to light this flame, uh, wanting to communicate with you. Actually, this is their actions. This is communication. This is someone who makes something happen so that they can talk to you. We also have the Page of Swords, communication again, sharing what they've learned about themselves. Amazing. Um, that's amazing. What does your person want you to know? What does your person want you to know? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We have the Page of Coins, 333. Three, three. Remember I said, well, this isn't 333, three, three, but I'm seeing, I saw the Three of Cups. Now I'm seeing the Three of Pentacles and the Three of Swords. Um, page of, this is someone who's working on themselves. This is someone who's learning about themselves. That's what they want. They want you to know. Their higher self is saying, I'm coming with a more stable offer. Look at, look at the field, okay? This person there needs to be time for this to grow into a harvest before this person can offer you something. And they're telling you, I've planted the seeds, you know? Um, I want to make this right. I want, I want to fix this. Three of, three of coins is about wanting to work together, wanting to put something back together. Needing your forgiveness. Um, these equal six. How many times did six come out in your freaking reading? <laughs> Um, so your person wants you to know that they're working on this. Um, that's what I'm seeing. This person is looking at ways they can improve and grow. Okay, so what what is the next big... I also, I also kind of laughed because on the bottom of the deck, we have the Knight of Coins. And this is supposed to be what your person wants you to know. This person wants you to know that they're determined to be enough for you. That's what I'm hearing. They're determined to be enough for you. Even if, you know, you don't believe it in the 3D, I'm telling you, their higher self is saying they're determined to lead their lower self in the right direction so that they can be that king of pentacles. This is someone that's on their way. I'm hearing that. I'm on my way from misery. <laughs> that song. Um, I'm hearing that. I'm on my way. We also have the Ace of Cups, which talks about a renewal, wanting to renew things with you, wanting harmony with you. All right, what is the next big change? The maestro! <laughs> Having the guts to put themselves out there. That's amazing. And you too, having the guts to put yourself towards whatever you want to go towards, you know? I tell you guys, don't just... Wait for love to come to you. You know, be be the main character in your own life. Fall in love with your own story. You know, if there's something you've always wanted to do, like learning how to read tarot, look into it. I I am excited to teach you guys. I'm not going to lie. When I learned tarot, I kind of wanted, like, can someone just give me a course and I'll just do the course, which I did. Um, but I actually learned a lot more from, you know, some of my favorite readers and just learning different interpretations. But anyway, we'll get into that another day. Ace of Coins. A stable offer. <laughs> I don't mean to yell, but come on. <laughs> That's what's changing. More stability. An offer. This person more, being more proactive. This person communicating more, you know, being more, I just keep hearing proactive. <laughs> um, what does, let's see what is coming. Well, that's the next big change. Um, anything else we need to know about this connection? We have the King of Coins. You guys, I cannot make this up. <laughs> I cannot make this up. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Um, crazy pants. Um, that is amazing. 
That's amazing. What I'm hearing is this person is coming. There's that pentacle again. How many times? How many times have I have I honed in on a pentacle in this reading? And what did I say about the queen of pentacles in the very beginning? Yes, please. <laughs> Her hand is open. She's ready. <laughs> um, anyway, that's amazing. But what I'm seeing, what you need to know about this person is they're still creating balance in their life. And that's what's causing this delay with the death card. That's why they're not coming in because there's still, there is still a need to balance the energy because what do you want? Six of pentacles. You want equal give and take and reciprocity. So this person has to be balanced before they come in so that they can give to this equally. And I have to point out, there's such a slight, that it's so slightly off center. I feel like you're close, you know? Um, so just, I feel like your person's getting closer and closer here. Anyway, that was beautiful. Is this even recording? I didn't even check. It is. That's a miracle. <laughs> so let's just see what do we need to, you know what? I'm going to get messages from them. Let's get messages. Oh, I want you back. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> If anybody knows what that was, good for you. <laughs> I would do it all again. I feel like that's you. I would do it all again <laughs> if you elevate. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would do it all again. That's your past energy. The two of you frolicking in the sunflowers. Just drawn to each other. Energetic, magnetic attraction. You didn't see my tears. Your person is crying. I told you. Dark night of the soul. This could have been someone inflated ego who like was too proud to even cry or shed a tear over this, you know? That ego can make you feel very defensive. Like, I, I know because I've had to work my way through that energy in myself. Um, when you have an ego and you hurt someone... If you have an inflated ego, for example, I'm just going to use this thing that I saw on my show. For example, on the show I'm watching, this guy kissed girls he wasn't supposed to. It's like a show about, you know, connecting. And during the test, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, <laughs> hi. <laughs> um, during the test, when they separated the couples, this guy kissed a few girls and like canoodled with them and used the excuse that he was truly testing himself. Like anyway, and of course when his, the person he was seeing came back, she hadn't done anything. Um, when she said like, I can't believe you did that. Why would you do that to me? I didn't, I didn't get to know anyone. I, you know, I told you, you matter to me. And instead of saying, you know, I'm sorry, you're right. The way I was looking at it was this. He got mad at her. Like, and he got defensive with her and he got mean with her. And she started crying and he didn't shed a tear until like two days later. And then he had a breakdown. It was the most amazing thing I've ever, well, it's not the most amazing thing I've ever seen. But I love to see people have awakenings like I love it um it's a beautiful thing when we can truly look at ourselves um anyway you didn't see my tears what does your person want to say you let me down interesting you could have let them down in some way I don't know why this happened actually for some of you maybe you did do something to let them down or maybe their ego told you that because what happens is when somebody has an overinflated ego or they're in, oh no, I forgot the word, distorted, yeah, distorted masculine energy, um, they will project onto you. I'm not talking about gender. Um, if someone who is afraid to look at themselves, afraid to take accountability, afraid to apologize, they will project it back onto you. Um, so this person could have said in the past, even though they let you down, 
that you let them down. Um, we have, I don't know why this happened. So this points to the fact that this person doesn't, you know, they don't understand the spiritual connection. It's confusing. We also have, do I still have a chance? And that's what I was seeing um, with that page in the queen. I want to make amends. <laughs> I want to make amends. I have trouble with intimacy. Page of Cups. <laughs> the Page of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles. Didn't I say it? <laughs> this person, Page of Cups, trouble with intimacy. I can't believe that. I compare others to you. Of course, that's what you do when you're in the presence of lover's energy. Lovers bond, hard to describe. Um, this person compares everyone to you, even their friends, their coworkers. Well, you're not my person. <laughs> you're not like my person. You don't comfort me like my person did. For some of you, your person could be with a karmic. I don't know what comes next. That's that, not, that's that eight of swords energy that your person's in. And that death energy, they're, right now they can't, well, I think in the past they couldn't see the way forward. I think they're waking up now. Um, but they didn't know what comes next. This person is unsure if you'll give them another chance. Like I said, your person could be with a karmic um, for some of you. Um, karmics are there for a reason. And I know that that does not make sense to the logical mind. I used to be just like the people who get mad at me for saying things like that. Um, but it's true. Karmics happen for a reason. Um, and they're to clear away some of that karmic debris that you, you tried to clear it away, but you couldn't. Um, anyway, my friends, I'm going to leave it here. I love you guys. I hope this resonated. Um, and yeah, I'll share more with you about Patreon. Hopefully I'll get it going in the next few days. And of course I'll add you and you guys can be there while I try and figure it all out. <laughs> I would love to do lives. I don't know how to do lives. That would be fun. Anyway, I love you guys, and I will talk to you later, and I'll be doing a face reading, of course. <laughs> anyway, I love you so much. I'm sending you so much love and light, my little butterflies. That butterfly with the cocoons and all the butterflies emerging, come on. <laughs> Beautiful. Anyway, I love you, and I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.